Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. Who are we? I doubt uh, that we'll reach a decisive conclusion today, but it's worth entertaining. And this question references the most popular of the Zen uh, Huatus or Huadus. That is a koan question that challenges our understanding of our true nature as beings. So who are we? My name is Robert and my Dharma name is Koho. Am I my name? Does my name represent me? Which one of those names is more accurate? My friends in Brooklyn and Queens when I was growing up called me Epstein. Hey Epstein. So is that a different person than when my mom called me Robert with her Brooklyn accent? It seems to me that the name Robert or Coho is just a designation. Now we've recently heard a talk here about the Diamond Sutra and how it says that those titles and names and designations and name and form are just ways of referencing things. They're just concepts. Now my name has a meaning but that meaning is assigned to it, it's not inherent. As Shakespeare said, uh, Zen master Shakespeare, what's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I'm not going to get into how we may or may not smell on various occasions, but we are the same person, no matter what we may be called. By agreement, when I hear the name Robert, I snap my head around like Pavlov's dog and start to drool. Well, I don't actually drool unless there's something really good on the stove for dinner, but I do respond to my name. One of the old Zen masters pointed out that there's something that responds when our name is called. He called a monk's name and when the monk turned around, he said, what was that that just made you turn around? <laughs> like, yeah. Like most Zen masters, he asked the question rather than answering it and accessed the old Watu, who am I, in yet another way. So what is my identity? Who am I? Am I my body? You know those movies where the pod people take over a body and they are inhabited by a completely alien personality? The body looks the same, but the person is no longer there. The same thing happens when I'm asleep or in a coma. The body is still lying around, but I'm not really present. So who or what is the I that is no longer present in that situation? The great Chan master, Su Yun, put this in stark terms with his favorite Huat Tu, Hua Du. He liked to work with the question, who is carrying this dead body around in reference to his own body? That's a pretty extreme way of expressing that we are not contained or defined by the physical body. We certainly have a physical body and that body contains some remarkable organs and functions and it is also the control panel for our mind, emotions, thoughts and senses. So it's a pretty important control panel but does all that equipment constitute a person? We can't really do without the body, but on the other hand, when I'm asleep, I temporarily let go of that relationship and don't really lose anything by it. I can run around in the dream body experiencing this and that, and I think it's just as real as when I'm awake. Then I wake up and I re-inhabit my ordinary relationship to my body again and call it myself. I'm not one of those people who says that all of this demonstrates that there is no self at all. Just that we may be suffering from a case of misidentification. One of the famous new age gurus, Werner Erhard, once said that the delusion of a separate self is like thinking that you are your nose. You're fixated on your nose and you have lost track of all the other parts of yourself. You can imagine how inconvenient this would be if it was a literal situation. Well, we're sort of like that in a way, we're fixated on our personal organism, the experience of our personal senses and the sense of separation that comes with the tactile and visual awareness of the boundary of our skin. Yet we all breathe the same air, inhabit the same earth, 
eat the same food that comes from the earth and recycle ourselves back into the same earth. Our consciousness, which makes us sentient beings, is the same in all of us. Another way of saying that we all have the same Buddha nature, the root capacity of being a living being and knowing what that living quality is. Does a dog have Buddha nature? Woof, woof. So when I meet another person and I think I am me and they are them, that's certainly true in a certain physical way. Yet as soon as we see each other, we enter into relationship. What is primary, the self or the relationship? That's a decision that each of us makes with our senses and our minds. How do we see? How do we feel? Do we approach others with caring and camaraderie, acknowledging our mutual nature? Or do we think of our personal interests and see the other person as either an inconvenience, an obstacle, or an instrument of our own needs and desires? And I'll point out with the example of the current situation in Ukraine, that when a country thinks it has a separate identity that needs to overpower others, all hell breaks loose. When we see that we may have a larger identity or at least a less physically defined one that we may have thought, we also have the possibility of temporary relief, temporary relief from the items of self. The Buddha said that these items of self were not really of the self, we just vainly try to own them and create suffering by doing so. We hope to control our circumstances, our environment, and more subtly, our experience, perception, thoughts, and feelings. But none of that is really under control. Do we choose our thoughts and feelings? Not really. But we still think they're ours because they appear in what seems to be our interior self. In meditation, we sometimes hone in on the true nature of thoughts and sensations. But we can also take a break from being a separate person at times by focusing on the experience of the space and presence that we are part of. We can even switch back and forth from what you could call the self to what you could call the non-self or the space and presence within which the self appears. That is a true vacation and I recommend it, but don't do this while operating heavy machinery. And remember to come on back to the lovely dual world of self and other, but also embody that essential connection that we all share. Thank you.